leafy spurge infestation is marching towards Caribou Targi National Forest and the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Local cooperators in 10 counties are building an army of insects to hold the line. Can you hear them jumping? Bryce Fowler shows us the line they are holding. So, just to show you where the line is, this is it. This is the line we're holding. This whole canyon system belongs to the same guy that where we was at two days ago. This canyon just loops all the way around there. So this whole thing was pretty much Leafy Spurge 10 years ago. And this is where Steve kind of started his, a lot of his biosaturation thoughts and to get bugs started. In about three years, it cleaned this canyon up right here. Um, but for everyone to know, this is our holding the line crew. Aaron is our team leader. Nice to meet you. And then there's Quinn and Jeremy and Eric. Thank you. We just go out and start sweeping, then we have the people come back and put their bugs into this, just dump them all right in there. And then we'll dump them into this homemade, you can use it for your planting in the, in the winter if you wanted to. But, um, and we made one this year with a bucket, just a screen on the bottom. And you can sieve it through there so you can try to keep it clean. And then we'll dump this into the square bucket, just so that we can dump it into this cone. And we graduated here so we know how many bugs are in there. We'll just dump them in there and we can look and see whether we got 100,000 bugs or however many we got. Then we just start filling up these cups and we'll dump some in there and look at how many and how many we put in. We can fill up a lot of, a lot of containers in a hurry. And uh, so we just kind of do it on a little bit bigger, quicker scale. And then once we get the containers full, we make sure we mark on them like you saw how many there were and, and uh, get them all in a cooler as quick as we can and get our crew and start sending them out and relocating them. My name is Liz Hebertson. I'm a forest entomologist with Forest Health Protection in Ogden. And right now we're on the Hold the Line project and we are releasing some of the Apthona beetles that we collected at an earlier site. You can see all of the different Apthona beetles that were collected earlier and some of the Oberia beetles. And in order to make the release, all I need to do is find a nice spurge patch and I'm just going to set the container down here in the open and just allow the beetles to naturally find their way out of the containers. And of course they'll do that eventually, but if I wanted to uh, facilitate that process, I could just go ahead and remove some of the plant material that the beetles are resting on and distribute it out amongst the plants at the release site or I can dump dump them out nicely or I can just go ahead and allow them to disperse on their own which eventually they will. Following the release of the agents this release site would be marked with a T-post. Photographs of the release site would be taken and coordinates of the release site would be taken as well as other data um, to document this release. You can take a picture and that picture links to that point. And so now we have an exact picture of what that point is. Photo points over time show us changes to vegetation and tell us if the insects are working or not. And then uh, Becca, as you know, she's the GIS consultant. She uh, trained us on how to work with GPSs, what's going to be best way to upload our our, our data and send it to her um, so that she could upload it on uh, Google Earth so that we could actually see where we found it, where previous release sites were, so that way we weren't uh, reinventing the wheel and redoing the same sites over and over again. We could actually try and find new sites to identify. Idaho Student Bug Crew students practice technical rangeland and professional skills such as public speaking and field work to develop and transfer technologies across western states. I'm Hannah Brown, I'm 17 years old, and I'm a member of the Gooding Bug Crew. I studied rangeland management and ecology sciences a lot in school through FFA and environmental science classes, and we'd study the plants and I thought I knew what the plants were. I thought I knew what a knapweed was, and I was like, oh yeah, I can do this, I've studied the plants. And so the first day out, on the crew, we go out into the field and they're like, oh, this is knapweed. I'm like, oh, 
that's napweed. I didn't know that's napweed. I thought this was napweed. Okay, now I know what napweed looks like in real life, not in the pictures and in the press samples. And so later that day, I go on a walk around our property, and I suddenly realize we have acres of napweed. Acres and acres and acres of it, and I didn't know that until I joined the bug crew. I think bug crew is really impressive because we cover six different counties, and in those six different counties we cover mountains, foothills, plains, valleys, and canyons. And in those different ecology settings, we also cover different sorts of plants. We cover everything from knapweed and Canada thistle, to leafy spurge and Dalmatian toad flax. And I think that's really impressive because we aren't working with one thing in one place all the time. We kind of have to be versatile in what we cover. Idaho student bug crews work with private landowners who donate their land for long-term studies. We see this as a wonderful program for the, from the kids' side that they get science experience, they get teamwork building, working together, they learn responsibility, they get to use skills that many other kids don't have yet. Our teacher who runs the program, Becky, she always comments about how much more advanced the kids are that go through this program in her math and science classes. The amount of money that the Forest Service puts in this program and the BLM, we get a lot of good effort and a lot of quality experience for these kids for a pretty reasonable price. It also gives them some work experience. They earn fairly good money for a summer job and it's just a really good program to lift up their um, skill level and their abilities to work together with other people. And they also have a great opportunity to get out in the community, to interact with ranchers and farmers and, and members of, uh, like in the town here in Gooding or other small towns around the rural areas. Funding sponsors for Southern Idaho Crews include Bureau of Land Management, Forest Health Protection, cooperative weed management groups and conservation districts in six counties. Today, there are more than 400 active biological control monitoring sites in Idaho. Student bug crews monitor changes in vegetation to learn if the insects are working and what new plants move in if the target weeds move out. Monitoring helps researchers know if insect populations are large enough to harvest and distribute in other areas. My name is Melissa Griffiths and I am the project coordinator for the Madison Valley Ranchlands group for their weed committee. This year it was pretty neat. Early in the spring we had a field trip out in the bear trap uh, to talk about biocontrol specifically. Carol Randall uh, participated, Charlene Singh, um, Mike Mooney with the BLM, and then our county weed board. We took a tour of the fire and we looked at the damage that was done. It was very early in the spring, but you could see the weeds coming. And we spent some time trying to determine if any biological control agents had survived the fire. And we were encouraged because they had. We found larvae in a few places. But as a result of that meeting, Carol Randall put together a great, um, a great summary of the field trip and also kind of a plan for biocontrol in that area. And, and we tried to follow through with that this summer. And one of the goals was to establish insectary within the area to identify some of the largest populations of leafy spurge, focus our efforts there. And Melissa is one of the original editors and reviewers of new interactive curriculum called What's in Your World? 